Binge the full week of The Ray Taylor Show ad-free over at InspiredDisorder.com slash plus. This is The Ray Taylor Show. Dave, season two, episode eight, The Birds, is the episode I'll be spoiling, breaking down, talking about in this episode. So if you don't want to be spoiled, I don't recommend you listen and or watch. But let's get into it, shall we? This episode opens up with Dave seemingly playing a guitar, singing a song. Uh, He is at a meeting at the label. Mike is with him. And uh, Dave is trying to sell them on even more ideas. Uh, not that he's, he's made any headway at the album Penis that he was initially brought in to produce uh, and create. Uh, he's trying to sell them on down the line. He wants to do almost like what Garth Brooks and so many other musicians have done is like create some alter ego where he does he he creates music in this different genre. This one being more of a a singer songwriting genre, uh, and it's all fake because he's not even playing the guitar. He's m- miming playing the guitar. Uh, but the c- guitar track was just being played off of a speaker. Um, and that's kind of, that's where Dave's head at. He's not focused on the album at hand. He's he's focused on, he's, he's focused on things that are potentially down the road, possibly in the future. Uh, and the label's confused because the, apparently... Uh, the last episode, as we saw, he was doing, he was part of the Double XL, uh, you know, class of 2021, which apparently, uh, despite Dave not being happy with how that went, despite as the viewer seeing how he just crumbled under the pressure of trying to do that cipher, uh, he, it actually turned out well. And the studio and the label was happy with how it turned out. Uh, and they want to know what the update is for penis and uh dave says he has uh four songs that are only halfway done uh so zero songs are ready to go uh but he does have six folk songs ready to go uh and and mike kind of being the realist in this in the situation the the manager of this train wreck that is dave uh, lets the label know that they're probably about a year out because it's getting close to the release date, the April Fool's release date, April 1st release date that they came up with. And uh, Mike is telling the label that it, the real, the realistic number that we would have to push this back to get things done is a year. Uh, which, cut to, uh, we see that uh, the label wasn't very happy with that and has evicted... Dave, along with everybody that was living with Dave in that mansion, uh, kicked them out of the mansion, and we see Dave moving back in with his parents, uh, which has to be a depressing moment, uh, because not only is Dave not living in this mansion, but also Mike, who is attached to Dave, Dave being his only client, despite the fact that, that Mike is you know kind of test the waters in other places he's supposedly i i guess the the tiktok guys that did the pranks i'm assuming that fell through because there's no mention of that uh the meeting that he had with the label uh doesn't seem to be you know despite everybody kind of wanting to work with mike it seems like mike is is still uh only working with dave um but Dave back in his old room, which has been redecorated for his parents to rent out uh, for Airbnb. It looks kind of like a, a, a girl's room, uh, which is v- definitely very weird. Uh, Mike back at home, or not Mike, Dave back at home, slipping kind of back into that sun roll. His mom asking to make him uh, a sandwich and cut it into the nice little triangles. Mike kind of giving Dave shit about uh, his mommy making him sandwiches again. Uh, but, you know, when Mike is asked for a sandwich, he, he obviously uh, accepts because who wouldn't accept a sandwich? Uh, especially, like, moms make good sandwiches. If you're ever, like, around somebody's mom, it doesn't even have to be your own mom. Just any mom. Moms just seem to know how to make good sandwiches. 
It just, I, I don't know. It, there's extra love in there. I don't know what they do. Uh, but Mike definitely accepts the, the sandwich. Andy, you know, he volunteers his uh, opinion on the situation to Dave, who didn't ask. But, you know, he trying to encourage Dave, letting him know that he doesn't think he's a failure, uh, which Dave didn't think he was a failure uh, because Dave is still in that ego delusion of him still is a master of the hip hop arts. Uh, and, uh, Mike kind of understanding the reality of the situation is that he's done nothing. He's gotten this opportunity to produce an album and squandered all every opportunity, everything he's gained from that he's squandered and, and not done uh, any any work he's had no travel in the direction of completion of penis um, and due to the lack of productivity they were evicted from the thing uh, cut to Ali showing up happy to say hello to Dave now living at at his parents house outside eating that sandwich uh, Ali comes bearing gifts which I think f is more of a joke on Ali's part maybe kind of uh, poking at Dave a bit because her gifts were a headband and a balloon, a single uninflated balloon, uh, which Dave uh, lets her know that he's unable to blow up balloons uh, because of his slack jaw, which I don't know if that's true. I don't I, like the balloon seems like it's an inside joke, but at no point in the show that I remember breaking down every episode of the show uh i can't remember a balloon being brought up in any situation but definitely feels like a an inside joke um and dave kind of still delusional to his downfall is labeling him being evicted from that mansion as him being reduced to his core and it just being more of a detour than anything uh which you know, I guess that's a nice way to look at failure in some ways, uh, you know, but you still should be at least honest with yourself and understand that you are moving backwards and not forwards. Um, so Allie brings those gifts. Cut to now. Um, Mike is inside. Dave is looking for his, his laptop. I think it might be the next day. Uh, or maybe later on, Mike's looking for, or Dave's looking for his laptop, and he finds Mike in the living room on Dave's laptop listening to music, listening to see the work that Dave has done. Because Dave doesn't share anything with anybody. Uh, notorious for that. Uh, mentioned many times, in many instances, uh, that uh, he's not one to show... I mean, even in the last episode... Where, where the the cipher that he was supposed to do for this double XL event, uh, you know, most rappers will just use lyrics and things from songs that are yet to be released, and Dave has none of that. And even if even if he did, he wouldn't be he wouldn't be using it for that that purpose. Uh, but Mike's looking through. Uh, Dave shows him where he's been saving his work in progress. One song in which was called Me Too, uh, which after listening to it, Mike realized that it's very tone deaf uh, in specifically in relation to the Me Too movement. Uh, the song is very contradictory to that movement and uh, not something that was getting Mike amped. Uh, and then he found uh, Ally's song, which wasn't mispronounced, is Ally's song. He plays that. And of course, that is the song. Uh, that ended, that was towards the end of season one, where Dave and Allie were going to the wedding, and the, he recorded that little interstitial as they're getting packed up and ready to go. Uh, it's also the song that he listened to on the drive away from that wedding after they broke up, uh, where he was kind of getting emotional slash inspired from the song. Um, so Mike listening to it, and enjoying it mike is positive about this song instantly once that song is played you can see dave completely change and become that vulnerable raw 
kind of embarrassed and emotional about the song. Like you could tell that it is, it's a song that means a lot to Dave because it's a, it's this, it's a song that is in reference to and about uh, this love that he had that is no more his uh, relationship with Allie. And uh, you know, Mike, after listening to the song is happy to see that Dave is upset about that relationship ending that he's still in love with Allie and Dave's still in denial about that, uh, that he is still in love with Allie, which kind of that, uh, one of many times in this show where I feel so related to Dave, uh, I, I understand that mindset. I understand that, uh, that kind of lost love that, that, that uh that part of yourself that is still in love with that relationship that one that got away in a a lot of ways that one that was your muse in a lot of ways and uh dave still in denial about it and now a quick word from our sponsor now you can wear the many faces original art by ray taylor select pieces from the ongoing series of abstract ink paintings all products made with high quality materials made right here in the usa Go to inspireddisorder.com slash TMF merch to browse the entire collection and save yourself an extra 10% when you check out by using coupon code RTSTMF. So once again, go to inspireddisorder.com slash TMF merch and save 10% when you use coupon code RTSTMF. And now back to our show. Cut to now. Uh, it's later on in the evening. Uh, Dinner is being cooked by Dave's mom. Mike is no longer there, but she tells Dave that uh, dinner will be in 20 minutes. Dave wants to go take a quick shower, which she knows will will extend. He won't be ready in time for dinner. And uh, But Dave wants to go take a shower anyway. And we see why Dave wants to go take a shower. Because we see Dave run over to the family computer and print out like he googles hot famous women and this starts printing out pictures from the inkjet printer which another time in my life i have also printed out jerk material porn material uh masturbatory material uh, off of a computer that was not mine onto (laughs) inkjet printer which if anybody's ever owned an inkjet printer which is one of the biggest scams like nobody should own an inkjet printer just get a laser printer just be done with it get a laser printer they don't dry out they last a long time laser printers are garbage the ink dries up whether you use it or not it's they break all the time the ink costs are crazy but if you're printing out full pictures on an inkjet you are not going to be printing much. Uh, so I related to that. Kind of weird because Dave should have a cell phone. But it, it, that said, it, it is took me back watching that scene, reminding me of that time in the late 90s, printing up porn pictures off of somebody else's computer, uh, a family member's computer that I was staying with on summer vacation. And... Uh, he took those pictures that he printed to the shower, which he was going to take a shower, and uses the steam of the shower to stick those pictures onto the glass surroundings of the shower, which as he is masturbating in this scene, you see the ink from the inkjet running, running all these pictures of these, these uh, actresses melting in front of him uh, as the song uh, Freshman by The Verve plays. Um, which is uh, a hilarious scene. It's a hilarious scene to watch <laughs> Dave jerk off in, in his parents' shower uh, while while these pictures, these printed out inkjet p- print pictures of not even nude women, just famous women melt. And uh, he shoves the pulp of these pictures down the drain to like get rid of the evidence afterwards very funny which i also even younger years before way before like in my early uh masturbatory years 
Uh, I would. I had a whole thing set up in the bathroom. That is like the place where I would go to masturbate when I would take my showers, take my baths. Actually, uh, I had like, I would have pictures that I would find in the woods, and I would pin them to the bathroom wall in front of the toilet as I would do my thing. Uh, and and it also reminded me of that, like two separate situations of masturbation for me as a child slash younger person uh de- being depicted in this modern day classic of a tv show uh episode eight of dave season two um so of course dave is late for dinner which his mom is not happy about uh but after dinner you see dave on the couch curled up on the couch with his mommy uh, and Dave is showing his mom his dating app, uh, which is Tinder-like, where he's sh- showing how to, like, swipe on things, uh, which is very, like, that is that is something I wouldn't, I, I cannot relate to whatsoever. <laughs> I can relate to how Dave masturbates, but not how he bonds with his family. Uh, but he's bonding with his mom, showing him how he matches with people on, on this dating app, which in the previous episode where he matched with Doja Cat, that was how he matched with her. Um, and he, you know, they're talking about Dave has this romantic view of how his parents got together and their relationship, this like very fictionalized romantic view of them and how he wants that for himself and his mom basically crushing his 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 distorted view of what love is and what long-term relationships are uh and telling him that like listen i was fat and your dad was into fat women so that's how we got matched up and it just you know we fell in love and that's how it is and it's like work and it's like we see throughout this episode how his parents are you know they're bickering and they're fighting as couples do because when you're around anybody for a long period of time you're going to be very comfortable bickering at each other uh and it's not this romantic movie version of what love is um so his mom is kind of shattering that uh that fictional reality that dave thinks uh it is and they kind of get into a little bit of an argument uh but quickly it gets toned down she's gonna go to sleep she gives him a good night kiss and she notices that dave's fly is open uh but dave is not understanding what she's telling him that his fly is open that he's open she doesn't say your fly is open she just says you're open and she's kind of gesturing to his open crotch and uh because he's not understanding she just bends over and zips it up and it's a very emasculating moment to have your mom zip up your fly as a grown adult. Uh, But that is on par for Dave being embarrassed uh, at any given moment. Uh, Cutting to the next day, Dave's parents are taking Dave to go clothes shopping, which is something I cannot I can't remember. I don't have memories of going clothes shopping with my mom. <laughs> I don't know. Don't have it at all uh, as a child or as an adult. Uh, so it's very weird to see Dave going shopping. His parents are going to buy him clothes. Uh, they have like arms full of clothes. And while Dave's picking stuff out, Dave's mom decides to go uh, go walk around the mall, do her own thing. Uh, which, you know, is is something you do, especially since she's been bickering back and forth with Don, her husband. Uh, but she goes, she ends up getting offered a free makeover, so she gets a makeover. Does not look good. Does not look good. Uh, and she, after the makeover, she goes to sit down on this, like, modern chair, and it's like a, it looks like a top, and she kind of topples over. Uh, and uh, it's embarrassing for her, and she goes to the bathroom to wash off. She decides to wash off the makeup. All the while, she's trying to get a hold of Don, who she's reminded to turn on his phone. There's been one of the things that they've been bickering about throughout this episode so far is that Don uh, is not paying attention to his phone at any given moment. 
uh, that she's constantly having to remind him to turn his phone on. And this is just another one of those instances in a long line of instances where he's not uh, picking up his phone. Uh, so she ends up tracking him down in the store, blows up at him. The moment he sees as they're trying to check out, uh, cut now to they're in the car on the way home. Mom's driving. She's got a headache. Dave trying to alleviate the pressure, trying to turn the mood around, uh, tries to sing a love song, trying to be funny and romantic and trying still trying to latch on to that fictional romantic view of a long-term romantic relationship uh which obviously isn't doing good her his mom tells him that he's got a headache that he's she's not she's not doesn't want to hear it uh so they get home and uh mom is asleep Got her eye mask on, trying to sleep away the headache, just trying to get her alone time. And, of course, Dave comes in, wakes her up, just no regard for what she wants to do, wakes her up. She thinks she's getting punked. Are you punking me? Am I a punk? And you find out that Dave cooked her a nice romantic dinner they walk into the kitchen dad's already sitting down there's candles lit company chicken and company noodles has already been plated up and dave is like patting himself on the back what a good son he is look mom i made this this dinner for you and she's already she's still mad she's like i just wanted to sleep i don't want to deal with any of this stuff So they bicker, and Dave finds out that she's not even a fan of company chicken. That's what she's made. It's not her favorite meal. Dave assumes it's her favorite meal because she's made it for Dave all of the time because it's Dave's favorite meal. But Dave is selfish, which she points out, tells Dave to grow up, stop being so selfish, which Dave is, which is like similar to all of the characters have been needing to tell Dave to grow up. It is it's it's just like the theme of this entire season has been to illustrate how self-centered and detached Dave is from everybody else, how he feels it's all about him. In the last episode, at no point did he give thanks to Emma for helping him out. It was always just he's always been about him. Why aren't people helping me? Me, 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 me. And uh, this situation coming from his parents uh, is the first time he's hearing it uh and they argue dave arguing as dave would have argued with emma about like how could you call me selfish i made this meal for you it's like you didn't make this meal for me you made this for you to make yourself feel bad this isn't even my favorite meal this is your favorite meal this is all about you dave and in the argument his mom mentions that his dad has depression Dave sits down and like, you know, the dad's like, yeah, I've got, you know, I've been struggling with depression. And Dave, as per usual, to make it about him once more, starts to cry because he doesn't know anything about his parents. Doesn't know what their favorite color is, doesn't know what their favorite meal is, finds out that his dad's favorite color is tan, which is hilarious. Because as a child, tan was my favorite color. I am colorblind, though. Maybe Dawn is colorblind as well, but I'm colorblind. I don't know. For whatever reason, as a child, I liked tan. I remember pulling the colors out of the, the crayon box, and I had to look at the name of the color because I'm colorblind. And I remember liking tan. Like, I can see some colors, but I don't see all colors. And uh, for whatever reason, I really liked tan. Maybe it was because I was a white supremacist as a child. I don't know. I wasn't really, but so I related to da- to Don saying that tan was his favorite color. Join Inspired Disorder Plus today. Head on over to inspireddisorder.com slash plus to join. Membership includes members only discounts and deals. You get access to the Ray Taylor show completely ad free as well as bonus episodes. You get access to the complete live painting archive. 
You also get access to every single podcast ever produced by Inspired Disorder, hosted by Ray Taylor. You get access to Ray Taylor's personal blog, as well as the opportunity to ask me any questions. So if you want to start a podcast, you're into art, ask me anything. And so many more things are being added every day to Inspired Disorder Plus. So sign up today, become a member, head on over to inspireddisorder.com slash plus and become an Inspired Disorder Plus member today. Later on, you see Don delivering slippers to his wife. What's her, what's her name? What's, what's uh, I don't think it's even going to say in here. Uh, anyway, delivering slippers in like uh, some kind of inside jokey type of a thing that they have where he's I think he's quoting like a 007 type of a, a line maybe I don't know but it's a sweet moment where it's clear that like despite the fact that they bicker and go back and forth that they still have a lot of love for each other and Don still tries to do small things to show that he cares uh, delivering those slippers so it's kind of a, a sweet a sweet moment uh, where he's delivering those slippers um, Cut to Dave and Allie. I think Dave went over to Allie's place to uh, have some drinks just to hang out. I guess Dave's parents live close to Allie. Uh, and, um, which doesn't really make sense. Because I thought his parents lived in Pennsylvania. Not entirely sure of the... Oh, I, maybe they moved. Because there was reference that Don is now retired and they moved. So maybe they moved to L.A. to be close to Dave. That's what I think it is. Because they did mention during one of the arguments uh, where Don was s sticking up for his wife when Dave was bickering. It's like, look, she sacrificed a lot. I retired. We moved. She did all of these things, no questions asked. So I'm assuming they moved to L.A., which would make sense because now he's over at Allie's. Uh, and they, they're having a couple drinks, and Dave offers to play her her song because Dave knows that, okay, there's something special with this song, but he needs her because it's about her, inspired by her. He needs her to listen to it to get her opinion on it. And just, you know, look, and also probably it's like, look what I made. You know, I still love you. These are my feelings. This is how I'm expressing my feelings to you because I am unable to do so in a normal manner. So this is how I'm doing it through this song. So Allie listens to the song and she starts to realize that it's about her. You see her eyes starting to well up. She likes the song. And, uh, you know, she's she's like tells dave that like she thinks she knows that this is dave trying to maybe rekindle something which i think that's what dave is trying to do on some level and she tells dave she's like look dave i love this song but like i've moved on i spent a lot of time and a lot of energy trying to move on from you which is one reason why i don't <laughs> i don't uh try and contact uh, you know the my ex that reminds me of Allie there's a reason why I have not tried to I like there's definitely been times where I in the same manner as Dave would want to reach out and do that and her response to Dave is exactly why I don't because she she has clearly moved on she values their friendship but she is n not going to be in a rel romantic relationship with him and Dave kind of, in my opinion, being defensive about that because he's kind of embarrassed that it didn't go the way he wanted it to go is just putting off the song is like, oh, that song is it's not a it's just a song. It's not about you. It's not me trying to rekindle something, which I think is bullshit. I think he's clearly I think a lot of the reason why this season Dave has kind of been an asshole is because he has his unrequited love uh, for Allie still, uh, despite the fact that he's still so narcissistic and egotistical and self-centered and selfish and all of those and all of those things. Um, so 
So she, you know, he he tells her it's just a song and that like she tells him that she doesn't feel comfortable with him releasing this song. Like he's like it's just a song, you know, I want to make it part of this the album and I just wanted to let you listen to it to see what you think. Make sure it's okay with you. And she is not okay with it being part of the album. Similarly to previous th- parts of the relationship that she wasn't comfortable with, specifically Dave tweeting in his alternate rapper uh, version of himself online, uh, talking about their sex life. She wasn't comfortable with that. And similarly, she's not comfortable with people knowing about their relationship because this is not only a personal song for Dave, but it's a personal song for her. I mean, you can see that she was almost crying when she was listening to it. And of course, Dave, because Dave is all about Dave, is not happy with that response and is trying to argue with her and convince her that, like, listen, it's just... You can't tell me I can't release this song. This is like, it's just, it's not really about you. It's like, they're not, people aren't going to care that it's you, that people aren't going to know it's about you. But she, she, you know, still, you said you wanted to hear my opinions and you were going to take my feelings into account all of a sudden. Yet, when my feelings aren't what you want, then you just ignore my feelings. Like, you only want to know what my feelings are if they are in line with what you want. Uh, Just another example of Dave kind of just being confronted with this, the reality versus his egotistical delusion of himself, his selfishness. And it's not what he wants. And Dave leaves. Just like he left at the wedding, Dave leaves because he's upset. He's upset that it didn't work, which I think part of why he's upset is that this song, he probably felt like it was going to have a completely different effect on Allie, like that she would want him back, especially since everything is falling apart for Dave around Dave. You know, he's struggling to grasp at things that, that he lost and he wants back and it doesn't work it doesn't work and he's upset and i'm sure he's upset because like this one good thing that he's made the only thing that he has created in this entire time is this song it's the only thing that's mattered to him it's the only thing that he's put energy into and it's been his biggest roadblock whatever it is whatever his mental situation is that's not allowing him to create music probably fear this is one thing he's been able to do and it's probably been he's been able to do it because he felt like it was going to be the catalyst for them to get back together is not going to happen and dave leaves hurt and that's how the episode ends so we're seeing in this episode not only ali once again telling dave another example of him being selfish self-centered but also he's hearing it from his parents like in every episode dave is like hearing from all these people around him how selfish he is and we're seeing dave act selfish especially in the last episode with how his disregard for all of the help that emma's given him uh it's just it's just like he's spiraling this whole season is dave just spiraling out of control and uh, kind of squandering every opportunity that he's built for himself, uh, playing the victim. And, uh, you know, it's a bummer. It's a bummer. In contrast to the first season, which was a lot of fun, this is far from a lot of fun. Uh, But that has been Episode 8, The Birds. Only two episodes left of Season 2. Next episode, Episode 9, is entitled Enlightened Dave. Uh, So we'll see. Maybe Dave will break through and uh, have uh, maybe some ego death in the next episode. Either way, until next week.
New episodes of The Ray Taylor Show come out every single day. Subscribe on YouTube and everywhere our podcasts are found. Binge the full week over at InspiredDisorder.com slash plus. Buy Ray Taylor Show merch over at InspiredDisorder.com. And follow the show on Instagram at Ray Taylor Show. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Peace. Out! Today is the day where you wake up and you realize that everything that you've been dreaming about, everything that you've been wanting, every goal and wish and hope that you've ever had can become real. Dreams can come true. What you manifest in your mind, you can bring to reality.